<sighs> Hi guys, I am back. <laughs> How are you guys doing? As, as, of course, you can see that I am in a full on cape, two layers of this and two layers of that. It is cold out here in Virginia. Yes. Hey, Keith, how you doing? I didn't even get a chance to add um, anyone in. I just want to say really quick, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Les D experience. And Les has had an experience. <laughs> hey, Otis, how you doing? Um, let me begin by saying, and I don't want to ruffle any feathers. And I need to say this because something transpired on my um, hiatus that I was on. And since I was gone for several weeks, hey, Floria, um, several weeks, um, the questions piled up in my inbox. So don't blame me. I just choose the questions really quickly. And, uh, and I know it's weird, and then some people may not get a chance to tune in today live because they're used to me coming on Thursdays. But it is so much going on. And Thursday, I have a prior engagement that I'm excited about um, tomorrow. So I did not want to rush or have do something or not do something at all. So I came on Wednesday. Yes, I know I should have warned everybody, but shoot, Beyonce could drop a whole album and y'all didn't know it. I know I'm not Beyonce, I'm just saying. <laughs> but um, I want you guys, this is a touchy, touchy, touchy subject. And I want you guys to um, be as honest as possible. But the you know house rules are, we need to be respectful of everybody's experiences. Yes and everybody's opinions. You know, we all can agree to disagree. Yes. And like I always say, child, we just up here getting therapy. Because <laughs> I need therapy. And I don't even know, I don't want to like cut you guys off while I'm tagging people in this. Um, I tell you what, I'll be inviting people while I'm talking. So I won't be able to see um, <clears throat> you guys um, as I talk. But um, I really really, 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 really um, think that this topic should be at least discussed and put on the table. Now, I had said initially that I really wanted to stay away. I am looking, guys. I'm multitasking. Um, I really wanted to stay away from race and religion and politics and things like that because I wanted my page to be a happy page. But guess what? It's less these experiences and it's live and it's real and it's raw. And it's real life stuff that's happening and it's going on. So therefore, I can't skip over the hard issues. I, I can't do it. All I can do is make sure that when we discuss them, we um, have respect, you know, for one, each, one another's opinions and experiences. And we're going to go a little over. I'm not going to end at 430 today because I did not start at 4 o'clock. Yes. Um, and, you know, I'm usually a stickler for um, starting on time a lot was going on here so um, again the topic is should pastors work a full-time preachers pastors of a flock work a full-time job in addition to governing his flock looking over his flock doing what he has to do and things like that and I know everyone that follows me have not um, you know, been to church or not church oriented and things like that. But I really need you to um, invite people. Hey, Clarence and Charles and Clinton and everybody. How you guys doing? Um, uh, Susie is already saying, you know, oh, Susie is saying, where you been? Well, for those of you who um, do not know, my mom passed on September 12th and I had to um, stop and drop everything and fly over to Los Angeles, California, um, to give her, um, a, a beautiful home going. And I want to thank everybody in California who did a, a magnificent job. Um, the funeral home, everybody, um, was very awesome. And I met some awesome new sisters there. So now I have sisters, um, additional sisters, um, there uh, in Los Angeles, uh, friends of my um, middle 
Sister um, Dietra Danielle. So I just want to uh, thank everybody in LA. You guys rock. Thank you so much. So that's where I've been, Susie. Um, and then I stayed up there for a while. Then I came back. When I came back, I came back to a bleep storm. So I had to do a lot of refereeing and, and, and running interference and catching up and dealing with some stuff in my neighborhood. That's going to be probably a topic coming up. Chow. You know, so that's why I've been, Susie. But I did not, hey, Tasha, I did not want to dwell on those things. Oh, and you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you who have prayed for me, um, who have sent me um, cards and, and flowers and uh, text messages and inboxes and, and actually prayed audibly in my ear. You know, um, I, I want to thank you guys for that. I don't want to ever, ever take you guys uh, for granted, you know, and so that's why my set look all crazy and discombobulated and I'm up in here in this cold <laughs> here in Virginia because it won't cold in Cali. You know, we came home and we needed coats. <laughs> what in the world? So back to this um, topic. That's where I've been, Susie, to answer your question. Um, so we've been dealing with that kind of stuff. And I've also been do it, dealing with some um, personal traumas and tragedies as well. Okay. <laughs> I know. Hey, Santiago, how you doing? So that's why I've been, guys. Excuse me, I know you know, but in case you guys didn't know, I was gone. And so I am back. And I had a flood of questions. And so I decided to pick this one. Now, um, I don't give my opinion until you guys start talking. So I'm going to ask you again, do you think preachers uh, uh, should uh, not work? Because, you know, if they don't have a full-time job, that it is the uh, flocks, uh, the church responsibility to tend to him, um, to make sure he has, you know, somewhere to live. He, his family has somewhere to eat. Everything, all his needs are um, supplied, you know, uh, that's every denomination that I know has that thinking, you know, and I really want to um, call in a special guest. Um, you know, he has a very interesting opinion about it. And I, I don't know if he's going to come on or not. I'll let him uh, <laughs> decide whether or not he wants to come in and touch on this subject. Yes. Um, I, and I, I, I'm, I told him that, you know, uh, I want to thank him for coming by, you know, but he's kind of antsy because he doesn't want to ruffle any feathers, but everybody's opinion is valid. And I'm not going to say who he is. Hey, Steven and hi, Key, and how you doing? Um, because I want to be respectful of his, com his comfort level. So if he chooses to speak on it, he can come in and sit I'm not gonna make him sit on camera, you know. But I think, um, sir, do you want to come in? He's not saying anything. Sir, do you want to join the show? No. Sir, do you want to join the show? I guess the answer is no. So I, I maybe, you know what? What I'll do is I'll give his uh, his stand on it, okay? And so, you know, what uh, me and the gentleman was talking about earlier, and I want to thank him for stopping by and, you know, being so fantastic. Hey, Steven, how you doing? <laughs> and um, he feels this way. And I hope I get it right, since he doesn't want to talk, I'm going to say. He has a problem, and I can, I, I can understand where he's coming from, with uh, a pastor or a preacher living in a compound with gold toilets and um, jets and $500 suits and chains and jewelry and just decked out to the nine. They're... Um, their children going to private school when they really don't have to go to private school, you know, and things like that. And um, I'm trying to like get comfortable. I have my leg up, guys. And he was saying he has a problem with that when the 
the patrons of the, the flock, the people, um, the churchgoers are struggling to pay their light bill or they're taking their light bill and putting it in the offering and they got $50 lines and $100 lines and $25 lines and things like that and implying that if you don't give this or give that the way they want you to give it or give that for that service, you won't be blessed. So he was feeling that way. And I was like, I understand. You know, because I'm open to everybody, everybody's opinions. And I really try to put myself in people's shoes as they talk to me about it, you know, and, and, I, and I'm so thankful that I have the ability and the capacity, you know, to listen to people and, and, and just try to understand, even if I may not agree with something or whatever, I still try to understand. But this, I kind of agree with him on. You know, and he has other things. I don't want to get it all wrong. But, um, sir, do you want to join me so you can really say your opinion? Okay. He doesn't want to come on. But, I, you know, I, I, I really think that this subject um, can, needs to be addressed because we had a, a very, um, I would just say spirited discussion about this topic. You know, now he was saying if it's the kind of um, church where they, you know, people give their tithes and their offerings and the pastor is well to do, like we were talking about and things like that. And that single mother or that family, that house burnt down or dad lost his job or mom lost his job or child is sick or um, a, a first a first generation is going off to college, they would give him by his books and, and make sure he's ready in his dorms and they can come to the church and get those funds and finances. So it's like, you know, a whole lot's going in, but a whole more great deal of it is coming out to the parishioners, to the faithful churchgoers, to people in need. There's a, 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 a food closet that you want to be grilled to death to get any food, not just for Thanksgiving and holidays and Christmas baskets, but throughout the year, there's a food closet. Um, there should be a clothes closet. You know, I used to, I created a clothes closet at my job when I worked at Centera College as a career service coordinator. And what I would do, it was my job to know every subject uh, medical assisting, uh, computer networking, business, massage therapy, I'm uh, missing something, all of those because it was my job to create mock fake interviews for the upcoming graduates and teach them how to interview, what to wear, what to say, how to look, how to do your hair. If you had dreads and that was your culture and things like that, I showed them how to do their dreads in a professional manner because we know a lot of corporations are run by other persuasion people who don't like this or that. That's a whole nother topic. So I was teaching people that. And so a lot of the graduates did not have suits and um, ties and, and, and dress shoes and um, suits for the ladies. And they didn't have those things. So what I did, I went into my closet and I went my friends and I went to Goodwill with my own money and purchased those things. And at the beginning of the year, whoever was like monetarily challenged or poor or whatever, so just struggling. We had a couple of students living in their car. At the beginning of the year, I would get there uh, in the beginning of the mod. We call them mods or semester. We will, um, I would get their sizes of their shoes, um, their tie sizes and blah, 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 neck size, whatever else. And throughout the semester, I would collect these items in suits. So, and I would give it to them free. They would come to me privately, secretly, and I would never tell anybody who they were and go, Mr. Dupree, I, um, I got an interview coming up. The interview, because I would set up interviews for them. The interview, blah, blah, blah. I don't have this. And I would go into the closet. Here you go, baby. There you go. Be blessed. Go ahead. You know. And so if I can do that, just being a career service coordinator, why can't the church, especially a church that the pastors is so rich, <laughs> that he is living in a compound. Um, Y'all know what a compound is. It's like a mansion, and then you got little mini houses, and then you got this big brick wall around it, a gate with a guard, all of that. Even if you don't have a whole compound, if you just have one of these mini uh, Mac mansions or whatever else, that kind of thing, I agree that that is wrong. 
And I say this, and I know people are going to come after me about prosperity and God want us to have the best and this and that. You know, I agree with that. But we're talking about when your flock or your congregation is poor and or struggling and you are dripping in riches. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not going to get into scriptures and things like that. You guys are welcome to do it. You guys can say whatever you need to say. Hey, Barry. Hey, Keith, how you doing? And so um, I want you guys to actually, you know, sound off. How do you feel about that? Do you think um, a pastor should have a full-time job and the flock? Now, a real pastor, I can't say a real pastor. I shouldn't say it like that. But someone who's really dedicated, I feel, this is opinion, an opinion, oh, just my opinion. I'm waiting for your opinions over there. My opinion is um, someone who is so dedicated to um, the word, to his people, to his flock, and to his community, his community, and not always looking for uh, a leg up or clout chasing or trying to be as rich as Jay-Z, trying to be as fly, you know, as Jay-Z and things like that. When I, when, I, when I pass, now this is my opinion. The man I was talking to, we didn't even get on this. But if a pastor is making statements like, well, you know, God said he laid down the, um, the, the something, for the, whatever, for the, uh, you know what I'm talking about that scripture, help me, Jesus. <laughs> you know, but um, if he is saying that, why can't I, you know, be as um, rich as Will Smith or have a house like Will Smith got? Why can't I have cars and stuff like that? You know, like Jay Leno. Why can't I be like Jay Z? Why can't I be like this one or that one and this one and that one? Why in the world are you setting your sights on what the rappers are doing or the, or the Hollywood stars are doing? In my opinion, he is giving us a peep into his character already. His view is skewed. Bars. I should be a rapper. <laughs> kidding you know but that's just my opinion you know what happened to being humble and serving your people and the community that's your job filling them up with the word and things like that but after you finish preaching they still got to go home and have some lights some gas some water some food some clothing you see what i'm saying that's just my opinion i'm going to see what you guys are sounding off on um Okay, Barry is saying, hi, they can have a full-time job if their church is too small to keep him afloat. But if the church can afford to pay them, then my answer is yes, looking out for the flock is a full-time job. I agree with Barry. Thank you for that, Barry. Thank you for being so honest. And he's also saying doing kingdom work is expensive and I'm not getting into the ties. <laughs> yes, yes, it is, Barry. Yes, it is. And let me touch bases on that. Um, a lot of people don't go to church. I don't know how Catholic churches are run. I've never been to one or any dominant denominations or whatever. But I've seen with my own eyes what it takes to run a church. I mean, people don't realize that you got to, if you're in a building, you got to pay rent. And even if you're buying the building, you got to pay a mortgage. So there's, you got to pay the rent for the church. You got to put, put, or just like your house, there's lights and there's water and things like that. If you have a youth department, at least one time an expensive year, you got to take the kids on some kind of trip. There's vacation Bible school. You know, in a vacation Bible school, you need little books and, 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 and food and, and drink and trips um, that they go to like King's Dominion or Bush Gardens, or they may go to the Hampton Museum and that's free, but you got to feed them. There's gas for the vans. If you got a, a really healthy, big youth department, you got over 50 something kids <laughs> or something, you, and you have to occupy that time you know, for them. So it can get really expensive, but we're not even going to get into everything else. If you have a, like one of those big coach buses, you know, if you're the kind of um, <clears throat> church that go off, go away because your pastor preaches and you are a big giant choir, you know, things like that. And during Christmas, I know a lot of African-American churches, they have Christmas plays, traveling Christmas plays. I've been doing Christmas plays, oh my God, since about 1989 you know, um, 
Connie um, Francis, and she was Robinson. I want to say it right. Sorry if I messed up your con name, Connie. But um, she wrote uh, magnificent plays. Um, and uh, the church I was at, they had some raw talent in there. Those people was acting. They were psyching and acting. Yes. And we used to, you know, travel around the seven cities. And I think the Eastern Shore, sometimes I'm not sure. Somebody can come and correct me on that. Um, with our, our theatrical troupe, <laughs> you know, and things like that. And don't even get into, you know, um, I know the Bible said the poor are going to be with us always, but you ain't got to help them be po. So therefore doing holidays, you know, we did the, um, the Christmas baskets, which was everything you need for uh, a dinner, same with Thanksgiving, was in that big box. You know what I'm saying? And some extra goodies for the Cheerinses and things like that. Um, so uh, Barry is saying also supplies. Uh, Barry is saying taxes. Taxes on what? Uh, does, do churches pay taxes? I thought uh, the uh, churches were tax free. I, somebody correct me. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I don't know about that. Somebody um, answer that for me. I didn't think churches paid taxes unless they're doing a 501c. Can somebody explain a 501c to me um, in their opinion? I uh, already said lights, Barry. I said supplies, like cleaning supplies to clean the church and vacuums and cleaning the, the, the toilets and keeping it clean and pristine, landscaping. I mean, whatever you would do for your house, multiply that times 10 and you got the necessities of a church. So we're not talking about that. Oh, uh, Susan was saying taxes and tithes. Hey, James and Ramona and Six Page. Yeah, um, it's a lot to run a church, a functional church. And if you're, uh, oh, uh, Barry was Barry saying property taxes. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> And also registration for every car registration and, and insurance for insurance on the church and insurance on the vehicles. Hey, David, that's my pop, y'all. Hey, pop, how you doing? Love you. Mwah, mwah. Love you so much. Um, yeah, that's uh, taxes with every vehicle. And those big giant coach buses that those stars go on tours on. Um, I know we had two of them at the time. That was years ago. Um, and a school bus, because it was so many people there. And then the regular 15 passenger vans, those things have to have gas, diesel gas, um, insurances. So yes, I get it. You know, it takes a lot of money. Oh, and they're also saying state, he said the state want their property tax. <laughs> You ain't never lied. They want their stuff. They don't care if you praising God or not. They want their stuff. You know, so I, I, I took time to break all of that down to let you guys know. I'm aware, and they're aware as well, the people talking, that it does take money to run a church. And we skipped a whole bunch of other stuff, you know. But what I'm talking about, and thanks, Barry, for um, um, doing that input, you know, the guy I was talking to about it today, he, and I agree with him on that point, have an issue with the pastor living large. I mean, large and in charge. <laughs> you know, his shoes cost more than people's light bill. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Nicole, how you doing, baby? Um, so he's talking about that. And what's so interesting to be a preacher these days, you know, in every other profession that will generate wealth and living well to do, you have to go to school for years. You have to have all these DDDs <laughs> behind your name. You really have to, you know, put your shoulder to the wheel and earn that money or that position or, or that clout. But correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Being a pastor, anybody can rise up and say, God called me. And who's going to um, dispute whether or not God called somebody or not? So therefore, they can open a church and do whatever. And I've heard people say really awful things that I'm not going to repeat the way they say, say it, you know, because <laughs> I don't believe in tearing down the body of Christ. No matter what I've gone through or what has happened, it's certain things I do. And I don't do no talking and talking about people and things like that. That's just not how I work. But you guys have heard um, the things that people say about um, calling uh, pastors pimps, 
and things like that. I have never said that. I'm only regurgitating and repeating what people have said. And they have said um, swindlers and blah, 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 da, 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 really things like that. And I, I find it disheartening that they are even able to say those things because it should not be. It should not be. It should not be a hurricane flood that covers the cars and trucks and your building is dry. You don't open your building right away. I'm not going to call any names. It should not be. I don't mean no harm. This is just me. You let somebody mess around and get less a little bit of money. That's what the kids saying. I ain't keep no money because I'm always giving stuff away. But it should not be people laying homeless around your church or on your church step. It should not be a homeless bum. Can you say bum? I don't know if politically correct or not. But it should not be homeless laying around the, on a block, a block radius of your church, especially if you are a uh, well-to-do, like middle class on up, like a, like a medium-sized church to mega church. There should not be homeless laying on your steps. Hey, Angelique, and you passing by, Good morning, praise the Lord. In your suit, are you going there and continue to preach? Mm -mm. I have a problem with that. You know what I'm saying? And I know we can't save everybody. It's not enough money to save everybody. I'm not talking about everybody. I'm just talking about that there is an issue if you're walking by and stepping over homeless people to go inside your big, beautiful church, coming out your Rolls Royce. There's an issue. You know, and if you and I've been to a people talk about small churches. I know of a small church, very small, the even building is small, that found some way to pay T D Jakes jet fuel for his jet and also him coming. That deposit first, because he ain't coming unless there's a certain amount already given to him in advance. I've been told I could be corrected. And he, they had to pay for his jet fuel. If it was a lie, one of the members told it. And then they paid him. Then they collected a big giant offering. That church was like really small, maybe about the size of one of these small little post offices. But somehow they found the money to do that. And there was homeless people, I dare to say 500 feet away from their thing that's out there all the time. People with signs, people, it, it's just a lot. I know um, I would, I, I, I welcome a pastor to come on here and give their opinions, him or her, um, on the issue. Because I'm not saying everybody. There are some good people doing good things, awesome things, who love their people, who are tentative to their people. There are people, pastors, that the people do not have to stand in line hmm, to say hi, shake their hand. Or pastor, you preach, or you know, without the fake secret services knocking them on their bottom area, or get, or stiff arming you when you come in to go, hey, pastor, it's like, whoa, why, why, why I got a handprint in my chest? Like, whoa, what's going on? I just wanted to say, hey, pastor, you know what? Not that serious for me, you know. I I be out like it's not that, you know, it's not that serious, you know. So um, it is four twenty nine. I'm about to wrap this up. But put your um, comments, you know, in the comment section over there. <laughs> put it in there, you know. And look, don't be afraid or ashamed to have an authentic opinion, whether it be popular or not. And you can put your experiences in there. You know, if you had any church hurts or whatever you want to say, you are welcome here in this house to say whatever you need to say to help your healing process. Cause like I always say on this thing, we all need therapy. <laughs> Let's get therapy together. Let's discuss it. Ain't no experts up here. It's just about a whole bunch of regular people, a bunch of grown folks having a conversation, having a platform, a forum where they can discuss their experiences and their opinions and how it made them feel, how it made them turn out and what they want to change and what they don't want to be no more. How, mm, I'm sorry. I'm gonna say hallelujah, Neil. Sorry. <laughs> no, I ain't sorry. But um, you know, this is what this place is for. I'm back. Yes, I am. Cutting it up, you know, and discussing it, bringing things that are taboo or not supposed to be discussed. Or shh, 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 shh. you're not supposed to discuss that, man. Kill that noise. If it's bothering you, 
if it's hurt you, if it's haunted you for decades or years or eons, this is the place where you can talk about it, baby. Yes, whether it be. So again, my question is, should pastors have full-time jobs in addition to governing their flock? You know, Barry said, yes, they should if they have a small beginning flock with a bunch of people on welfare and things like that. And I'm adding to it, Barry, <laughs> um, that who just, just start now. You know, he should have a full time job. They shouldn't be expected to take care of their children, you know, their house, you know, have shoes on the feet without holes on and whatever else, and take care of him and his whole family. No, that's what Barry is saying. But he is, if he have an affluent congregation, a bunch of doctors and lawyers and <laughs> and all that stuff, uh, Barry is saying that he should not have to work. He should be able to live off the tithes and the offerings. So that's Barry's opinion. So you guys give you guys a um, give you an opinion, and also so um, and Barry, I have not forgotten your question. I'm gonna get to it sooner or later, you know. But I just wanted to discuss this, and let me put this disclaimer out there: I am not trying to tear down the body of Christ or make any preachers look bad or say anything negative about church. So don't at me, don't at me, because you're gonna get the smoke. Don't at me. Mm -mm. I'm just posing a question that one of my viewers who want to stay anonymous wanted me to ask. And I can go into all the details what the person said, why they asked it and things like that, because I don't want you guys to figure it out. You may know them. <laughs> so I don't want to put them out like that. But um, I asked the question to you guys. I posed the question and it's up to you guys to put your opinions and whatever else in the comment section, your opinions or your statements or your questions. Uh, so um, that's it. I want to thank you guys for joining me for the Less D experience where we all get therapy. <laughs> we just talk about it, y'all. All therapy is, is talking about it. I can't prescribe nothing, but we can talk about it. Yes. So again, thank you. I'm out of here. Put your comments in the comment section, your questions in the comment section, and let's talk. All right, baby. I'm excited to be back, y'all. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs>